I'm Dodie Green, the widow of uh, Sergeant Ray Green, US 512-17133. What is that? His ID mil number? His military number. Uh -huh. And he served proudly and very bravely with the 40th Infantry Division, 160th Regimental Combat Team, H Company, in Korea. He got there May 12, 1953 and served his first combat was Heartbreak Ridge. I met him 8.30 at night, Thursday, July 12, 1951. I was 14 years old and he was 19. Where did you meet him? Uh, in a state park in Connecticut. Connecticut? Yes. Um, and I knew he was special. Oh. So, when was he drafted or? Yes, he was drafted. Uh, at what age? Uh, he, 20. 20. He went into the service uh, when? November 16th, 1952. 52. Took his training at Fort Dix, New Jersey with the 9th Infantry Division, 60th Regiment, Infantry Regiment, um, Company L. And he was there until um, March. 1953, when he had a seven-day pass, came home, and then he had to report at the beginning of April to uh, Seattle, to North Fort Lewis, Washington, where he stayed for a short time. And then from there he went into, um, was taken uh, on um, the McRae, which was a, a Navy ship. I think it was a destroyer, and went into Yokohama, Japan, and I have the date at home, and then um, got his rifle at, at Camp Drake, and then May 12, 1953, he went through Pusan, the port of Pusan, and then from Pusan went up to Seoul for a couple of days, and then reported uh, as a replacement to the 40th uh, Infantry Division. So by the time that he arrived around Seoul, yes, you he was only there for a couple of days. Couple of days. Yes. And then where did he go? Then uh, after uh, he went to Heartbreak Ridge, which was the main line of resistance in the Punch Bowl. Uh huh. And then um, he, the fortieth, then was sent. They came off Heartbreak Ridge and uh, went to. Uh, there were so many replacements because the fortieth division had been on the main line of resistance for a hundred days, and then they went to Kojido Island with the new replacements. Uh -huh. And then um, in June they went to um, the monsoon season, monsoon season uh, which is like our hurricane season in Connecticut. Uh, went to um, uh, the main line of resistance, and he was uh, again on the, at the punch bowl on Bloody Ridge before, during, and after the ceasefire. There has been severe battle right before the armistice on oh, July yes. 27th. For one, for one week. Uh, Two weeks before the ceasefire, the communist forces sent six divisions against three American divisions, the 40th, the 45th, and I believe it was the 3rd Division. And it was a, a week-long battle that uh, determined what is today the DMZ. And right after Ray wrote, um, after the ceasefire, July 27th, Ray Road uh, being on Bloody Ridge and how quiet it was, the, the big guns were quiet. Uh, they were digging the new lines, which was today's DMZ. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the hills were so steep, the helicopters were bringing uh, up the equipment and food, and they were thankful for the food because they had been on sea rations, which they couldn't eat, but they drank the coffee. Mm -hmm. You seem to remember everything like you did uh, participate in the Korean War. How did you come to know such details? I mean... Just for love for my husband. Did your that, husband that was tell... was how I shared his life. Did your husband tell you all those details? No, that's in his letters. Letters. Every letter. And I'm just repeating what was in his letters. You told me right before the interview said that you got a letter of how many? 
126. I didn't realize that until last year when I was being interviewed by the Defense Department and somebody, a submarine or Navy submarine or a friend asked me how many letters did I have and I never counted them until last year. 126 letters, one Christmas card and one telegram. The telegram came from Tokyo. After he was in the 40th, after the ceasefire, then the 40th Division returned to the States and my husband was sent uh, the end of May 54 uh, to, and I have the paper from the government, um, that he was sent as a replacement to the 7th Infantry Division, 17th Infantry Regiment, Headquarters, um, 2nd Battalion, and stayed there until July 12, 1954. Where? Mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, the main, well, it was at the DMZ, it was the 7th, and stayed there until um, July 12th, 1954, came home, well, reported to, he got off at, at Seattle, Washington, and he was on the Gordon, which was an Army troop ship, which I have pictures of. And then he went to um, Fort North Fort Lewis for a short time, and then he, by train, he came back to Connecticut, and he had a 30-day leave, and then he reported to um, Belleville, New Jersey, which was, um, and I couldn't repeat, but now that it's being, it's declassified, it was the Nike Hercules missile project that he worked on for three months. He wow. couldn't even mm -hmm. tell his mother and father about it, mm -hmm. and I was there twice. I could, not on the base, not, um, but at the main gate. We married February 19th, 1955. 55. 55. I had to get a high school diploma before we got married. And that was the only thing that disappointed Ray, that he wasn't able to come to my high school graduation because he was still in Korea. It, he wrote many he wrote, he was very disappointed in that. Uh, but his whole family, his mother, father, brothers, sister-in-laws, they came to my graduation. Um, Ray... Always oh, said Ray's we, family. Ray's family. So you were so we weren't like, married yet, uh -huh. but they represented Ray. But Ray always said when he came home from Korea, how wonderful the South Korea. The, there were two Katusas in uh, his uh, unit, and he said someday I'm going to take you back. I'm going to go back and I'm going to take you with me. And he was uh, truly impressed with the, the uh, gentleness. Uh, of the Korean people, and they are, we could see that they were, uh, to this day, they are very grateful for the efforts that, and the sacrifices, and the Americans made many sacrifices. Uh, they left comfortable homes to go to a foreign country and to stay in a dirt trench 40 degrees below zero. No indoor plumbing, no electricity. Um, he wrote by candles. He had to hurry up and finish a, a letter because the candle it was getting low. He had to. Um, he couldn't write sometimes because he had no writing paper, and so. Um, but it was a wonderful experience, and he was so proud to be able to do it. So he will, he felt rewarded, right, when he went back to Korea in Oh, yes, but it, it was very difficult when Larry said, the next one, we're going to take you, I'm going to arrange it, and I have made arrangements to, we're all going to go up to Panmunjom. That, about 2 o'clock in the morning, I woke up and Ray wasn't in bed. And uh, I thought, what happened? Well, he was out on the porch. Mm. And I went out to him and I said, what's the matter? And he said, I don't know if I can go. Mm. And I said, well, if you can. I said, I understand. I said, but don't forget Larry uh, went through a lot of trouble to make these res these um, all these plans to take you up there. And being the highest ranking officer of the United States, um, and to go off uh, 8th Army Headquarters was risky for an admiral also. And um, Larry was proud to do it for Ray, and Ray said in the end he would go. And uh, we went in the admiral's van, and uh, the admiral, his aide, and different ones, uh, uh, chief of staff, they were um, with us. And uh, Ray walked the tunnel with the admiral, and Ray was quite impressed with the engineering of what the North had done. 
And um, I'm more impressed after I have seen the artwork that the South Koreans have done centuries and centuries ago with little Buddhas. And um, unfortunately, it's not in South Koreans' possession anymore. It's in another country. And I wrote to their ambassador a couple of years ago, and I said that as good neighbors, they should return property that does not belong to them. <laughs> anyway, um, Ray was, uh, Ray, uh, then after, and we went, when we went to Camp Boniface, uh, we ate in the second dining room, which you have to have two-star. And there, when we first went, and they call it the Brotherhood, you could feel the tension up there in 1989 at the line, and uh, there was a, a hat, um, Pam Jam, and I won. I said to Ray, oh, buy that, and he wouldn't do it. But the Admiral's men did it and gave it to him. He came home, I was with him um, September of 54, uh, when the weather started to change in Connecticut, yeah. and it started to get from warm to cool. Uh, I was with him when he had a malaria attack, that I couldn't put enough blankets on him, uh, he also had a little frostbite in his ear, but uh, he never complained about anything. Was he wounded from the battle? Yes, he was. Not from a battle, from uh, sabotage. Ray, uh, after uh, the ceasefire, um, he was in um, heavy mortar. That was uh, his uh, company, was heavy mortar. In fact, I have a picture with the archway, uh, the camp, and this is after um, the ceasefire and uh, the camp uh, with the tents and the sign says, through these portals pass the best damn mortarmen in Cur mm. Cur 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 um, But Ray transferred from, staying in the same company H Company. He went from that to communications because the captain had, uh, he was uh, his radio man in communications. And uh, he said that he changed his MOS uh, November 53, uh, three months after the uh, ceasefire, because he liked what he was doing in communications. And um, if he ever, if he stayed in the army, or if he returned to the army, he could return to the same job, and he liked it. Um, but they would go out on patrol at night to um, inspect the communication wires, and uh, if usually they were damaged. Uh, this one night, and it was uh, I didn't hear from Ray for about six weeks. Even his mother called me and uh, asked me if I heard from Ray. Ray was her youngest. And um, I said, no, there's no man. She said, if, I, if he writes to me, if I get a letter, will I let her know? Well, absolutely. I was 16, I, I knew she was concerned. And finally, after about six, seven weeks, I got a letter. And um, he just wrote everything. And then all of a sudden, Ray never went to paragraphs. He just wrote what came to mind. And the most important thing was my mail, my letters to him. But uh, he wrote that um, he hurt his arm, and um, then he didn't uh, write any more about that. Didn't say he didn't say how or anything. And then when he went to uh, that was March, nineteen fifty four. And then when he went to the seventh division, he uh, wrote, and he had just gone into the seventh division. I think the letter was June. Second 54, and he said, My arm is still hurting, and I'm going to go see the doc Tuesday. Oh, I still have that. Amazing, amazing. So he wasn't there for battle, he was for writing a letter to you. <laughs> huh? I, uh, it was one time when they had a tent, and it was after the ceasefire, the men in the tent, uh, they hid my pictures. And he got mad, and while he was telling me about this, and this is just before he passed away, and you could hear in his voice he was very upset over it. He said, nobody's going to sleep until I get those pictures back. I think probably in the last two years I've read them quite often, and that's when I'm getting the full meaning of them. And after he passed away, they were so personal to me that uh, I didn't want to share them with anybody. 
and um, I still don't want to, but for the, I want my grandson to know what is going um, Have you talked to your grandson about it? My grandson, his picture is in the album wearing his grandfather's army jacket mm -hmm. in the Veterans Day Parade, and um, Stevie has seen um, uh, the albums that someday he will get. He's only 15 now, so but he will get them someday. Has he read any letter? No, I don't let anybody. I just copy parts of it, and that's what I did for the Defense Department last year. Mm. Um, just got, I had I did read on his DD two fourteen, which is what is DD two fourteen? It's Department of Defense, uh -huh. and it's the paper that they get when they separate from um, active service, mm -hmm. and it has. Uh, how many years, if did they yeah. go to college, did they go to high school, where were they from, uh, uh, what they left, uh, when they left the service, what um, rank that they had. So it's a basic old documentation of a soldier, right? Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. But on that was Ray's um, combat infantry badge wasn't on it. And um, I promised him that I would get that and get his Purple Heart. And that's what I came down for two years ago. And did he get the popper heart? No, because there wasn't enough um, uh, proof, and all the records burned in. Um, I have more of the government papers than St. Louis had, and they burned in 1973 or 74. So uh, I was glad that I made these uh, scrapbook albums to tell the story to my grandson what his grandfather did. Uh, I had a formal hearing down here with the Army about uh, the, um, the medals, and um, he, was, he, he was, the request for the um, combat infantry badge was um, granted, but the Purple Heart was denied. When he wrote about coming off a of Parkbreak Ridge, all he said it was rough going. He never said anything else, mm. and that's. Uh, he wrote about other things, and uh, and he also wrote that he shouldn't be writing where they were, and he hopes nobody, uh, the government, doesn't open up the letter. They did confiscate quite a few of his uh, uh, photos. Oh. He he uh, took pictures, color slides, and they did um, confiscate some of those, but not the letters. What did he tell uh, you about? Uh, Goje Island. What was he Island, doing? Goje Island, it was monsoon season, and he and somebody else, uh, they went to a movie, and it was American in Paris, and uh, the rain, it was so heavy. You mean in Goje Island? On Goje Island, mm. and the rain uh, was so heavy. The, the, the monsoon season is like our hurricane yeah. season in Connecticut, yeah. only it lasts a lot longer, and everything is mud. And they were they were going to have an inspection, but uh, they had to clean the boots, and there were money. But they went, the two of them went to uh, the movie. It was American in Paris, and uh, when they got back, they were soaked, and they had to change. He had. What was his mission in Gaza Island? Just uh, um, I'm not, I don't know. That's where the the prisoner yeah, yeah. Yes, the yeah. camp was yes, there, right? Yes. So he might be uh, guarding around that. I don't, I don't know if he was a guard. He never said. Mm -hmm. He never wrote anything about that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But he wrote about the rain and uh, um, going for dinner. Or How and I think they were. I think they were in um, a Quonset hut sleeping. I don't think they they were in tents. I think he wrote that it was Quonset Huts. So you were in the high school waiting... For him to come home. But before, you were waiting for the letters that he wrote. Oh boy, did yeah. I wait. Explain to me when you received the letter from him. What was it like? Oh, um, it gave me a reason to go on while my husband was dying. But two months after my husband died, uh, my son had a heart transplant, miracle of life. He never talked harsh about it. Mm. Never talked harsh about it. Uh, what I am relating is just what was in his letters. But uh, 
when he did talk about being wounded, that was the first time he talked about it. Uh, I asked him when he came home, you know, I was curious, I wanted to see what it looked like. And he didn't want to see me, and he was a little bit annoyed with me. And um, he finally let me see it, and that was that. Didn't talk about it, never talked about it. Uh, Ray used to be a volunteer fireman before he left, and they used to have firemen parades mm -hmm. in different communities. And when he came home, he said he would never march again. And I didn't realize until um, maybe it was last year, coming across uh, some of the pictures, they were color slides, 35 millimeter color slides that I told Ray we should have uh, converted to prints before, and we did six months before he passed away. And, and one is a formation where each company is holding the company banner and it was snowing and they had to go back up to the um, DMZ for their duty from the, the, I call it a safe camp, I don't know, was it a UN camp? I'm, it's where they had tents anyway. But then they had to take turns at rotation to go back up to the, the DMZ. And um, I think because they had to march up in line again, I think maybe Ray never said, but maybe that's why he didn't want to march in a parade again. It took many, many years for Ray to march in a parade again, and then he finally did with the VFW, and that wasn't until after we went to Korea. Special bonds that will never be broken as long as a Korean War veteran is alive and pass it on to their family. He wrote after um, the ceasefire that they were near a rice paddy, and they made a shower out of uh, in the rice paddy. Um, Obviously, that was a novelty, but that was very ingenious to do. He also wrote about um, the, um, the terrible K-ration food <laughs> and didn't eat it didn't want to eat it. And I have a picture of Christmas Day, 1953, that uh, they, um, and it was snowing, and they were, they had dinner out in the snow. Of course, it was half frozen when they got it, but, um, and where they were before the ceasefire, when they, when, between, uh, when he got there until uh, after, a little after the ceasefire, there were no civilians. Civilians weren't allowed near there. They had to, it must have been devastating for uh, the, the Korean people. Oh, yeah. And the Korean people have been very, very gracious and um, very generous. I thank the people of the Republic of Korea for, um, and your generation uh, for taking an interest. But it's, um, we're all in this world together. And hopefully, um, your children, my grandson, maybe there won't be any more wars. Hopefully, hopefully, someday, uh, the Republic of Korea, North and South, will be united again.